Welcome back. We're now going to be finishing off chapter 20 in, the, in this lesson. In the last two days, we've talked about the two different types of connections, series circuits, parallel circuits, and more than likely, I told you probably a great example of this are Christmas lights. Okay. Series circuits, sorry, Christmas lights in series, those are the ones, those are like the old style ones where if one bulb goes out, they all go out. The newer ones, parallel, if one goes out, that one's out, but all the rest of them stay together. Both have advantages and disadvantages. These are the simple, simple ones. Most of the circuits that we're going to deal with, actually in our real lives, are a combination of both series and parallel. And so you have to figure out a way to analyze these circuits in order to figure out a way how much current goes through, uh, how much energy is coming out. And please realize that one thing that we didn't attack in all of our stuff so far is the energy dissipator given off by these. We could replace all those resistors from the previous two days with light bulbs if we wanted to. And that way we could figure out how much energy is gonna be there, how bright they're gonna be, all of those. So these are still useful. I'm giving you just the bare basics, just the introduction stuff. We'll realize we can now apply this to our real everyday lives if we so choose. But as I stated, most of our circuits are going to be what are called combination circuits of both series and parallel. And so we're going to work with a simple complex circuit just to take a look. And so to give you an example, you could have a battery down here which is going to once again supply our total voltage and then it can come up and maybe we can have one resistor in series and then maybe it splits and so there's a junction there and now some of this some of this goes here and maybe this one comes to this resistor and comes back out maybe this one comes up and this one has a resistor and then another resistor in series so you have two and then they combine back together and it comes down like this and then you come back and maybe you have another parallel section down here. Coming back up. And so you don't have, we can't just look at this and I, if I label all these, here's R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, okay? Now if I look at my current, my current comes out, this is my total current leaving. Whatever current leaves my battery has to go through R1. But then when we get here, uh-oh, we have a junction. So now some of that current's going to go up and go through. Oops, I need to change colors. My fault. Some of that current's going to split and go through R2 and R3. Some of that current's going to come back down and go through R4. It's then going to come back to the junction another junction and those two currents are now going to come back together and now that current's going to come back and so this is going to be the exact same as the total that we started with because it's only got that one path to follow but it comes back down here and once again we have that junction and so my currents come in and it splits and some goes through r5 some goes through r6 and so you are going to be in charge of trying to figure out well how much current goes through each of these okay now, we know how to combine resistors in series. We know how to combine resistors in parallel. But there's no quick, easy way to do this one because if you look, R1 is in series with this R2, R3, R4 combination. But R2 and R3 are in series, but those two are, are in parallel with R4. And so tomorrow, we're going to work on this particular one. I'm going to give you this example. And I'm going to put numbers into it. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on combining them together. Okay? You can't add R1 to R2, R3, R4 until we find out what that combination is. You can't add, you can't find out the combination of R2, R3, R4 until you combine R2 and R3. And so we're going to work on analyzing them inside out to try and combine to find out what those resistances are, and then from there, determine how much current, how much voltage goes across or through each. So this is the one we're gonna work at tomorrow. So make sure you have this done. And what we'll do tomorrow is we'll provide numbers for our total voltage. And I shouldn't be in red, but you get the idea. Change that to green and yours. I'll change it to mine later, okay? But we'll take this picture and we'll actually analyze this tomorrow, okay? So that's our combination circuits. Let's talk about real life, okay? 
in your house, you have a breaker box, and we're going to talk about fuses and breakers here in a second, okay, that comes in. The main line comes from their power line into your house. Your breaker box then splits that up and sends it off to different zones in your house, okay? Well, what happens is when you plug something in, you want to plug that thing in in parallel, okay? Well, you don't want it to be in series because you don't want to have to close your refrigerator door, have the light go out, and that means now the lights in your house and your kitchen also go out, and your toast doesn't work and your oven doesn't work, okay? So they all have to be connected in parallel because you want to be able to turn stuff on and off independently without affecting the other things. Now, that's the upside of parallel. The downside of parallel, though, is remember, every time you add a resistor in parallel, the total resistance decreases. And as the total resistance decreases, as R decreases, then your current increases. Okay? And by this point in time, if I have not told you this, then I have been remiss. Okay? And if we have not, if you've not demonstrated this in a lab, okay, we haven't done our job here. But you should know that as current goes up, the amount of heat energy generated also goes up. And so you can get enough current where these things will heat up to the point where you can cause a fire. Okay? And so this is, if you've ever heard of something, it's called a, a, a it's like a house fire or something like that, and it came out as an electrical fire. Okay, what happened was people added too many things in parallel. The total resistance decreased to the point where the current shot up so much that it actually caused the wires to heat up to the point where there was a fire. I'd like you to remind me, because I have a great story about this, about one of my former students that this actually happened to, and I'll tell you about it tomorrow in class, because it's a fantastic story. I love the kid dearly, and he gave me permission to tell the story, and I can actually use his name tomorrow. So remind me about this, but know that every time you add, and I'll give you a quick diagram here. So let's say we have a voltage source here, boom, bing, bing, okay? And now I have, actually, let's make this a true junction. Let's make this look clean. Comes up, it splits. And so here, and I'm just gonna use this for my heater. I can't spell, there you go. And it comes off like that. And let's see, uh, we're gonna have a George Foreman grill. I'll put that kind of like a rectangular thing. So for the GFG, George Foreman grill, have that come up here. And we'll have the uh, lights. Um, let's just go toaster oven. We'll just do a square for that. Toaster oven, TL. Okay. Well, every single one of these devices has an amperage or a power wattage on it. And so you can figure out how much current will flow through it. Okay. And we're going to say that for my purposes, and actually, I should have a switch in on every single one of these. So here's the switch put in so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay? The heater, when it's on, will draw 10 amps of current. The George Foreman grill, well, those things suck a lot of current too. We're going to say that sucks 7 amps of current. And then your toaster oven, eh, it's just an itty bitty one, that's going to suck 4 amps of current. Okay, well, if all you have is the heater on, then what's gonna happen is when you get to this junction, I should probably finish off my circuit so we don't get confused here, okay? If all you did was close the switch on the heater, initially the current coming out will just be 10 amps. But then if you turn on the George Foreman grill and the toaster oven all at the same time, now all of a sudden that jumps to 21 amps if you turn them all on at the same time. So by adding them in parallel, you increase the amount of current flowing through. Okay. So what will end up happening? Too much current goes through. We have a problem there. So to save ourselves, because humans by general are not exactly bright in this area. Again, my example tomorrow will give you that clue. Okay. We have developed things called fuses or breakers. And the purposes of those are really just to save them for ourselves. Okay. So if we go back to this example, if I put a fuse in here and I'll put it in purple, I'll put a squiggle, blah, 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 blah. That, okay, it's not really the schematic picture for a fuse, we get the idea. But if this fuse will only allow 20 amps to go through it, what's going to happen is you can run that heater, great. You can run the heater in the George Foreman grill, great. In fact, you can run 
two out of three of these with no problems. But if you were to run all three at once, you'd be pulling 21 amps. That's more than what the fuse can take. That fuse will break and it will shut off the power going to it so that you aren't going to create a fire because 20 amps is all you can handle. 21 amps is going to cause that wire to start heating up and possibly have an electrical fire. Okay? Now, fuses is what we initially came up with. Fuses are good. And you actually, we actually have these in our cars still because they allow us to figure that out, but you have to replace them if they blow. Okay? We now have what in our houses now are breaker or breaker boxes. These work off of the exact same principle. They only allow a certain amount of current to go through, but instead of them breaking and you having to replace them, they cause a thermal expansion of the metal and cause the breaker switch to open up and thus stopping the current. So if you've ever you know, been hair drying, you know, whatever, doing your hair in the mirror, da -da -da, you got the lights turned on, okay, and at the same time you're, you're cooking your breakfast off the side, okay, and all of a sudden, click, the breaker blows, like, oh, and then you have to go downstairs into the bank basement da -da, and flip the breaker back. What happened was you were pulling too much current. And so by the breaker tripping, that's what it's called when it opens up like that, you're not going to be drawing too much current through and causing potentially a fire. Okay? So fuses and breakers are our safety devices that we build into our circuits to save us from drawing too much current and potentially causing a house fire and having your house burn down. So with this is all based off of, breakers are based off of thermal expansion. They have the ability to be reset. And I actually have a couple fuses and breakers that I'll pass around so you guys can look at tomorrow. We'll disinfect and all that other stuff. But they can be reset, okay? Whereas a fuse, it's still based off of thermal expansion. What will happen is there's actually a little spring, little wire in there. It will actually burn up and break. But it's all based off of this thermal, the fact that when current goes through, it causes stuff to heat, heat up. Okay, in a fuse, it breaks that wire, killing a circuit. In a breaker, it's that thermal expansion of the metal causing it to trip open, and thus it acts just like a switch, but allows you to reset it. Okay, so we will play with these, talk about these tomorrow. We'll spend a majority of the time working on that uh, combination circuit, so because those can be kind of tricky. But that ends chapter 20, and that ends our view of electricity, or our investigation of electricity. We head to magnetism next. So, everybody have a great night. We'll see you later. Bye.